In this video, we will be discussing the power output of air turbine handpieces and how to use the power information provided to you by manufacturers and researchers to get the most out of your handpiece clinically. Let's start with how we measure the power output of a rotating machine like a dental handpiece. Here, we see a rope brake being applied to a rotating wheel to slow it down. This is similar to how the speed of a burr in a handpiece slows down when cutting into tooth structure. If we measure the force on the rope that it takes to slow down the wheel, then we can use this information to calculate torque, which is a component of the work output of the wheel. Additionally, if we measure the speed of the wheel while we measure the force it takes to slow it down, then we can generate a speed versus torque curve, which is used to calculate power output. The ADA Laboratories developed a dynamometer test system that applies this rope brake concept specifically to measure the power output of air turbine handpieces. Just like with the wheel, this rope brake dynamometer can be used to produce speed versus torque data. And for a rotating machine like an air turbine handpiece, power is equal to the product of torque and rotational speed. Once power is calculated, it can be plotted versus rotational speed to generate a curve describing the power output of the handpiece. Now, let's take a closer look at the speed versus torque and power versus speed curves and what they mean to you as a clinician. When we look closer at the power versus speed curve, we can see that the maximum power output of the handpiece occurs at half the free running speed. This region, known as the sweet spot, is typically where cutting performance will be the best. But clinically, how do you find this sweet spot on the power curve? Well, if we break down the speed versus torque and power versus speed curves, we can see that the handpiece starts at maximum free running speed with no resistance to rotation of the instrument in the handpiece, so there is no deliverable torque and no power output. However, as soon as you start cutting into tooth structure, the resistance to rotation increases and the instrument begins to slow down while power output increases. As you continue to push harder into the tooth, the resistance to rotation continues to increase and the instrument slows down further, which continues to generate more power. As this continues, the handpiece will eventually reach half of its free running speed, which is where the maximum expected power occurs. At this point, as you continue to push harder into the tooth, the speed of the instrument will again continue to slow as the resistance to rotation increases. However, now, the power will begin to decrease. So past the sweet spot, pushing harder will actually reduce the power output of the handpiece. And as you continue to push harder, the handpiece ultimately stalls and the speed and power output drop to zero. So, what can you do to get the most power out of your handpiece? Aim for the sweet spot at about half the free running speed. When cutting, paying attention to the sound and feel of the instrument can help you adjust how hard you're pushing to find that peak performance. If you're not getting the cutting performance you want, pushing harder isn't always the answer because the speed of the instrument starts to slow down too much. If you're still not getting the performance you want, Check your drive pressure, water spray flow rate, which should be approximately 50 milliliters per minute, and cutting instrument. And remember, proper maintenance is critical for getting the most out of your handpiece. For more information on handpieces and other evaluations, you can go to the PPR website at ada.org/ppr.